This nightstand is about to get a makeover. I'm going to add some raised detail, a whitewash, some custom hardware, and maybe a few surprises on the inside. This video is full of tips and techniques, so make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss a thing. Hey, I'm Deanna. Welcome to my studio and thanks for joining me for this furniture makeover. The finish on this piece was in pretty rough shape when I first got it, but it's made of solid wood and didn't need any repairs, so I thought it would be perfect for a makeover. Now I've done a little bit of prep work to get it to this stage. First, I started by thoroughly cleaning with TSP. I used my palm sander to remove all of the layers of paint and stain that were on this furniture piece. And that brings us to this stage, back to the raw wood. On this project, I want to create a carved wood look with a whitewash similar to the finish on these pieces. So my first step is to create the carved wood detail. Instead of actually carving the wood, I'm going to be casting some appliques, painting them in a similar color to the wood, and then adhering them to the surface. For this, I'll be using Amazing Casting Resin, and this is the formula that turns white and cures in 10 minutes, as well as some decor molds. As a Redesign with Prima content creator, I get to try all kinds of fun products and then share with you my feedback and tips. So a big thanks to Redesign with Prima for sending me these molds to use on my projects. Start by laying your molds on a level surface. I like to put a piece of paper or a drop cloth down just to protect the tabletop that I'm working on in case any drips or spills. And then it's time to mix up the resin. It comes in two parts. There's an A side and a B side. And it's a really simple one to one ratio. The kit also comes with a couple of little measuring cups and a popsicle stick for stirring. Measure out equal amounts of A side and B side. And then combine in a mixing cup. Slowly stir to combine, scraping the sides and the bottom. Just keep mixing until you don't see any more swirls. It's about 30 seconds. Now this is a quick setting formula, so you do want to work quickly, pouring the resin as soon as it's mixed. Slowly pour the resin into the mold. For open molds like these, I just pour the resin in one corner and allow it to flow to the rest of the mold. Now there are some really fine details where maybe it doesn't flow as it starts to get thicker. So you can use a small toothpick or popsicle stick to help the resin find those tiny little spots. You can see here it's already starting to turn white. It'll take about 10 to 15 minutes to harden all the way through. I can feel the cup getting warm in my hand, which tells me the product is starting to cure and to set up. So I may have some product in here that hardens before I get it into the decor mold. See here how it's coming out really thick and chunky. That's not going to flow properly into this leaf here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out. So you can see there's some areas here that are not quite set up yet. So I'm going to leave this sit just a little while longer and then we'll come back and pop it out once it's all done. Okay, this feels ready to come out. So we'll just go around the edge and sort of loosen. And you can see how easily that pops out. Check out all of that beautiful intricate detail. If there are any spots where you may have over poured the mold, you can easily just peel this off while it's still fresh, or you could use a utility knife to cut away the excess. And this is still a little soft because it's so fresh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it down to continue hardening and demold the daffodil. I hope you could see how quick and easy that actually was. Now, I do want to make a couple more appliques for my nightstand, so I'm gonna continue casting those. And then I'm going to be using some of these leaves to make the hardware for the drawer and the door. Now, you don't have to actually clean the mold between applications. If there are any excess bits on the surface, they just easily wipe off, so you can remove those before you move on to your next set. I 
I've got several appliques complete here now and I'm just going to let them sit and harden a little bit more before I move on to painting. When you demold them, they're still quite soft and flexible, which would work great if you had a curved surface. You could apply that around a leg or a bend in a piece of furniture. Once they do sit for a little bit longer, this one here has been sitting now for about 30 minutes, they do get really hard and you can no longer bend it. I'm really enjoying working with this amazing casting resin, but I'm curious to know what are some of your favorite products to use when casting appliques from these decor molds? Head down to the comments below and leave your response there because I love trying new materials and I'd love to see what some of your favorites are. Now before I move on to painting the appliques, I'm going to work on those custom knobs that I mentioned earlier. The plan is to pour some resin into one of these leaves and then using a bolt while it's still setting up, hold it into place. I've never tried this before, so I'm hoping it will work. I guess we'll find out here in a minute. So I can see it's just starting to turn white here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the end of the bolt in. I'll do the same over here on this one. And because the molds aren't very deep, I'm going to just pour a little bit more resin right on top to try and make it a bit more secure. I just might need my toothpick here to guide it over. Okay, so I think this is set enough. Let's try and pop it out and see what happens. That worked great. I think this is gonna work for the door as a handle. I'll set that aside and let it harden up a bit more. And here is a smaller one that I think I will use on the drawer. That came out pretty good too. You can see the tip of the bolt that right there in the center, but I'm going to be painting these, so I think this is going to work just fine. Before I glue these onto the surface, I'm going to paint them to match the color of the wood. I'm going to use chalk paint because it will stick to the resin, and because when it dries, it's a flat, porous paint. I think it will have similar properties and appearance to the wood, which will help me to achieve a cohesive look later in the project. I'll start off with Honfleur, Old White, and Tilton. I've got the door here from the nightstand to help me do a color match. I want to create a color somewhere in this tonal range. I think something like this will work for the base coat. Later on, I'll add a little bit more variation. So I think this is a pretty good start. I'm gonna mix up a batch and then get to painting the appliques. I'm just using a small craft brush to apply the paint. I'll leave links in the description box down below to all of the products I mentioned in this video so you can easily find them if you'd like to check them out. I'm just gonna let these sit here to dry. It won't take much time at all since chalk paint dries very quickly. And then we'll move on to gluing them right onto the nightstand. Now that these pieces are dry, I'm gonna be gluing them onto the nightstand. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue Epoxy. There are lots of different options for adhesives. Just read the labels and make sure whatever you use is appropriate for the surfaces you're working on. So for example, something that would stick to wood and resin. This glue has about a five minute open time for working, so I've just squeezed out a little bit here at the start.
A couple of the pieces were slightly under poured and so they have this little raised edge and when I put the glue on, the glue really only sits on the edge and this part, the flat part, doesn't actually touch the wood surface. So I'm just going to take a bit of sandpaper and level things out. Now I'm going to add a little bit of variation to the appliques. In real wood you can see there are multiple colors where the grains run through and these are looking pretty flat. I will be doing a whitewash over top after which will cover quite a bit but you'll still see that underneath color and so I want to create a little bit of variety in the tones. I've got a tray with the same chalk paint colors from before that I was using. Han Fleur, Old White, and Tilton, and I've added a little Athenian Black and Red. All I'm doing is taking a little bit on my brush, diluting it with some water, and then just trying to match up sort of the grains underneath. And this definitely doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to, again, give a little bit of variation and help it to feel more like real wood rather than just a flat painted applique. Now it's time for the wash. I'm going to be using old white chalk paint for this step as well. It's really easy to create a wash. All you have to do is mix the paint with some water and it turns the paint more into a translucent stain rather than an opaque paint. Now the ratio of paint to water just depends on the look that you want. More paint makes it more opaque. More water makes it more translucent. I'm going to start with a two to one ratio. Two parts water to one part paint and I'll just mix up a little bit to start. I'll do a test patch, see how it looks on my wood and we'll go from there. Your measurements don't have to be super precise. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. And stir thoroughly to combine. Every once in a while while you're working, you want to give it a stir as well because sometimes the paint will settle to the bottom. And I've got just a really watery liquid paint. Start on the side or the back of the piece somewhere hidden to test your solution in case you need to adjust the ratio. Take a paintbrush, dip it in the solution, and just paint it on a small section to start. Then take a rag and wipe to remove some of the excess. I think I need a little bit more paint. It's pretty subtle, so I'm just going to add a bit more paint to my mix and do another test. So now it's more like a half and half, one to one ratio that I'm working with. Although I'm using white today for this wash, you can use any paint color that you like, whether it be black, brown, pink, blue, it doesn't matter, the technique is the same. I just want to create a really soft, almost like a bleached wood or a white stain on the entire piece. And I'll leave it to sit a little heavier in all of these details. Don't worry, I'll bring you in closer so you can have a look when I get there. Let's give this a try. I like it. That looks about right. Now you can always add more after if you want it to be more white. 
So I'm just going to get started. When doing the wash, just break it into sections at a time, applying with the direction of the wood grain. Brush on the solution. And then just gently wipe it back with a cloth. I like to allow it to sit heavier in all these details and creases, so I put a lot on and just let it flow into all the crevices. And I'm going to leave it flat to sit and dry so that all of this paint right here heavier in the creases, puddles, and it really adds some dimension. And you can see a hint of those underneath faux wood grain marks that I made. So that still shows through and I'm glad I took the extra step to do that. On a long flat surface like this side, when you're applying your wash, you want to go the entire length with the grain. Otherwise, if you stop kind of halfway through and that dries, that might give a line that you would see in the finish. So it's better to go the entire length. So if you're doing the entire side of this dresser or a tabletop, you would want to go as long and linear as you can. I need to leave the whitewash to completely dry before I apply the sealer. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to add some fun touches to the sides of the drawer as well as the inside of the cabinet. I'll be applying this decoupage decor tissue paper and this is also from Redesign with Prima. Once you have a couple of pieces of paper cut, the process is pretty simple. Basically, you apply an adhesive, you take the paper, press it into the adhesive and then seal it when you're all done. If you're looking for a more detailed step-by-step -step instruction on this decoupage process, I'll cover that in my next video. So if you're interested in that topic, remember to click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you're alerted when I do upload that video. I'm almost finished with this project. It's time now to put on the sealer. I'm going to use the Annie Sloan Chalk Paint Wax in clear. It looks white, but it does go on clear. It's really easy to work with. I like to put some on a tray so I can work it in nice and even to the tips of the bristles. And then scrub the wax, pressing it into the wood. Work in a small section at a time and then take a rag and just wipe to remove the excess wax. And that should basically feel dry to the touch right away. What I like about the wax on a finish like this is it has a really matte flat sheen to it, so not overly shiny, and it just helps to enhance the colors of the wood. If you want to add a little bit more white to sit in the grooves, you can use a white wax or you can make a white wax simply by taking your clear wax and some of the same old white chalk paint and mixing them together. For finer details, you may want to use a smaller brush, get some of the white wax onto the bristles and then you can press it into all those little details and grooves. And then take your cotton rag and just remove from the high points and allow it to sit heavy into the creases. Here's the finished piece. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed this video, remember to click the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to be alerted when I upload new videos, click the subscribe button as well as that little bell icon so you'll get a notification when I do post new content. Thanks so much for watching. See you back here next time.